here this afternoon for the purpose of selling the effects of Mr. William Hale, who is leaving Africa for England tomorrow. Oh. Assuming the sale is successful. Lot number one. A wonderful piece of furniture. A genuine antique. What am I offered? Ten. Fifteen. Seventeen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Hey, I only paid a tenner for it myself. <laughs> Please, Mr. Hale. Twenty-five was the last offer. Do I hear thirty for this genuine antique? Thirty. Thirty-five. Come on down from there. <laughs> this is my sale, and I wish to make a speech. But, Mr. Hale. Oh, come out of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to take part in the regrettable failure of one William Hale. You're not a failure, Willie. <laughs> Angel. The failure of the aforementioned W. Hale may be attributed to horses with short noses, good cards, but not good enough. Bad luck, old man. Nonsense. But it is obvious that many of you are here today prepared to pay out of friendship for me prices far beyond the value of the articles to be sold. No, no! Yes, yes. And believe me, my friends, I am grateful. But it cannot be. And so that you are not cheated, I am going to be the auctioneer. <laughs> Lot number one. Even if this piece of furniture were to live another thousand years, it will never be an antique. How much am I bid? Nine! Fifteen. Who, who said nine? Who said nine? I did. For the third and last time, it's yours. Oh, no. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot number two. Here we have the bed occupied by one W. Hale during the entire two years of his life in East Africa. How much? With or without the owner? Without. Sixpence. <laughs> For such a charming compliment, it's yours. <laughs> now chuck in a couple of blankets. Five pounds. Eight, ten, twelve. Fourteen. Yeah, who said ten? I did. It's yours. I've always wanted you to sleep in it. Lot <laughs> number three. Here, if I may say so, is the ugliest piece of furniture ever born into the world. How much? One pound. Two. Three. Four. Five. Come on, stick to it. I've almost got my passage money. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Eight. Good heavens. What's the matter? Oh, no, 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 nothing. What is it? What are you... You can't be reading the paper, then jump up in the air and say, no, 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 nothing. <laughs> Terribly funny. Will you tell me what's in that paper at once? Your son, Willie, has met with the misfortune, darling. I knew it. What's the scoundrel been doing now? Read it. Lord Leland's son sells himself up in East Africa. I knew it. I... I told him this was the last chance I'd give him. Go on, what's it say? What's it say? Mr. William Hale, youngest son of Lord Leland, conducted the sale of his furniture in person. <coughs> he attributed his failure to horses with short noses, good cards, but not good enough. <laughs> At the end of the sale, he informed his audience he was clear of death, uh -huh. his passage home, and a hundred pounds to play cards with. Oh, the, the villain, I... I give him a furniture and he sells the lot. <laughs> Never again. Father, darling, calm yourself. I won't calm myself. The scoundrel's been nothing but trouble since the day he was born. This is the... This is the tenth time I've given him another chance and he's failed me. But, but Father... Never be... again, never again, never. Never, never. If he... If he ever sets his foot in this house again, I'll... I'll kick him out. That's what I'll do. I'll... I'll personally kick him out, the villain. The infernal villain, I... Hello, Dorothy. And Lord Leland, in the role of the heavy father, was tremendously effective. Ah, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> you, you <laughs> cheeky little devil, you. <laughs> and who's going to get the order of the boot? Don't tell me, Arthur, you've been a bad boy. Hello, Dorothy. <laughs> no, I'm not the guilty one. It's little brother Willie. Well, after all, I, I do see the old boy's point of view. Yes, you would. Susan tells me that you're going to become engaged to the Grand Duke Paul. Yes. Well, he's a lucky fella. I hope he makes you very happy. <laughs> Will the future Grand Duchess take tea? Thanks. What's he like, this brother of yours? Willie? There's his photograph. Oh, he's a wicked, thoughtless, irresponsible sort of a person. But I adore him. 
Oh, he is attractive, isn't he? Tired, old fella? Well, you haven't much further to go. Sorry, sir, it, it's promised. Oh, my friend, we are living in a world of broken promises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, oh, go on. <laughs> Step in. How's yourself? Oh, uh, not so bad, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, old friend, let's concentrate. I want you to take these bags to Leland House, Grosvenor Square. Oh, uh, I've driven his lordship there many times, oh, sir. Good. Well, I'm his son. Oh. Now, now, listen. My family doesn't yet know that their little pet is in England again. If my luggage arrived before I did, it would give them the opportunity of wasting a good deal of their rage on my luggage instead of on me. <laughs> In fact, they might even be too exhausted to say anything to me at all. <laughs> That's right, sir. Uh, but what do you think, eh? Oh, it's a grand idea, sir. Good. So you pop along with it, leave it, and say nothing. Right over, sir. Oh, much obliged, sir. We are obliged to each other. Uh, not at all, sir. Tomorrow, sir. I'll lay you the odds to half a crown a dozen. Where do I draw me money, Governor? Leland House, Grosvenor Square. Uh, I'll be there tomorrow night, sir. Hey, don't you come if it loses. <laughs> you bet your life I won't, sir. <laughs> George, my little fella, and how's yourself? The board was being in a shop window, eh? Well, so would I be, bless your heart. What's that? Be a sportsman and take you out of it. No, I'm broke. Besides, what would I do with you if I did? You'd be no trouble and you'd behave yourself. George, you lie to me. You know you'd be an awful lot of trouble. Don't keep on saying you wouldn't because you couldn't help yourself. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I'm broke. What's that? You're cheap. Just one minute. So how much for George? Price is 15 pounds, sir. What do you mean by saying you were cheap? What's that? He says you've doubled his price because I look rich. Pedigree dog, sir. The price is 15 pounds. Good afternoon. Twenty in the whole world, George. Yes, I know it would leave a fiver, but I want to go to the Derby tomorrow. But for heaven's sake, will you, will you stop looking at me like that? Look here. If I offer him a tenner and he refuses, will that satisfy him? Crush your heart. A tenner for George. I'm sorry, sir. The price is fifteen pounds. Good afternoon, finally. <laughs> Sorry, George, old fellow, but uh, he's as hard as nails. Goodbye, George. I'm sorry. I think we might have been good friends. Good luck. I'll pray you find a nice home. Sorry I can't, old fellow. I must go to the Derby tomorrow. Goodbye. Good luck.
Give me that dog and may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Can I crush him? Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're just a dirty little blackmailer, that's what you are. Taxi. Where are we going? We're going to my club for a whiskey and soda, and then we're going to see a beautiful lady. Do you mind? White's club. I'll shut you here. Ooh, what an order. Oh, how sick I am of it. You'd hate to leave it for all of that. I wonder what's happened to Mr. Willie all this time. The Beast hasn't sent me a message in nearly two months. Ring up his father's house and ask where a cable would find him. Save your money, lovey. Little Willie is here. Mary! You beast! Why didn't you tell me you were coming home? I shouldn't have seen how pleased you are to see me. My word, I'm delighted to see you. Oh, this is wonderful. Molly, go and tell them my understudy must go on to me tonight. <gasps> but, Miss, you... Go and tell them. And you, you're going to take me out to dinner. Oh, I can't think of anything I should like so much. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Now you get behind that screen. Get behind that screen and I'll dress ever so quickly. Was it? You like her? Well, it's just as well, because you're going to see an awful lot of her. Well, uh, Mr. Willie hasn't come home, my lord. There you are. Had his luggage sent here at five o'clock yesterday afternoon. And here it is, half past nine the next morning, and not a word. Not a sign of him. Perhaps he's met with an accident. Of course he's met with an accident. I only hope he'll marry her and stay with her. But, Father... There are that... no buts. I won't stand it. The moment he sets his foot in this house, I'll... I'll kick him out. That's what I'll do. I'll... I'll jolly well kick him out. Ah, there he is now. Yeah. Good morning, Blunt. Good morning, Miss. Is Miss Susan ready? Miss Susan's just finishing her breakfast, Miss. Dad. I'll kick him out. That's what I'll do. I'll kick him out. <laughs> Am I interrupting the peace conference? Come in, Dorothy. Be sure I'm not away. My oh. dear. Ah, hello, Dorothy. Hello. hello Arthur. You could never be in the way. Well, 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 they. They tell me tonight is the great night, eh? Mm, well, I don't know about the great night, but I shall be well as known as officially engaged. Eh, and I shall be at the party for the express purpose of drinking to your health and happiness. Oh, that's divine of you, Lord Leland. Not at all. I, I'm very fond of you, my dear. I, I only wish you were going to marry this fellow. Oh, really, Father, this is most embarrassing to me. And to Dorothy. I don't care if it is. I'd like to have this girl for a daughter-in-law. You know why? He, I'm very unfortunate in my sons, Dorothy. This one's an unenterprising fella, and the other, well, ha, a villain may come into the house at any moment. <laughs> yeah. Willie's home. Or at least we think he is. His luggage arrived last night. And here it is, <laughs> half past nine the next day, and not a sign of him. Have you telephoned the police? Do you know Master Willie? No, I, I've never met him. Ah, well, if you had... You know the telephone and a policeman's wife would be more effective. <laughs> a villain, my dear. And the moment he sets his foot in this house, I'll kick him out. I swear I will. I'll kick him out. Yes, by George, I will, man. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Have no fear for the day. You look divine. Good morning. Good Thank morning, you. Sir. Blunt, my dear fellow, I'm glad to see you. And I'm delighted to see you, Mr. Willie. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, tell me, Blunt, how is my father? Uh, I should describe his lordship, sir, as a gentleman in uncontrollable rage. Oh, dear, 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 and on my first morning, too. How very unfortunate. George. George, old fellow, I'm not going to take you with me because things are going to be said to me that might make you lose your regard for me. Uh, Blunt. Uh, would you describe me as looking penitent? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Courage, Willie. <laughs> Father! I'm delighted to see you looking so well. Oh, Willie! You've no right to be delighted about anything. What are you doing here? I... And where were you last night? I, uh... Well? I unfortunately missed the boat train and had to spend the night in Liverpool. Uh, your luggage was labelled all over passenger to Southampton. Uh, I know, but, uh, but I cheated and got out of Liverpool. <laughs> ah, don't... Don't laugh at the scoundrel, Dorothy. You'll follow me to my study. Uh, could I have some of the fatted calf first, Father? There'll be no fatted calf for you in this house, my friend. Well, uh, could I have some bacon and eggs? No! Yes, be quick about it. You will find me in my study. <laughs> Susan, oh, my beloved! Oh, really, darling, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, there you are, looking sweeter and more beautiful than ever. Yes, new, bolder and badder than ever. <laughs> Oh, you don't know Dorothy, do you? How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Arthur, how are you? I'm all right. Good. I say, look at the time. Aren't you coming to the derby? Oh, I hate Gracie. So does Dorothy. We're going to Lloyd's to watch them play cricket. Oh, I see. All right. Um, back Laguna, Arthur. I would if I had your money to spare, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. Home, sweet home. you home, Willie? Lack of means, darling. Haven't you any money at all? Uh-huh. Two pounds. Egg? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Father won't give you another penny, you know. And I think I ought to warn you that every chance he'll kick you out. Oh, how awful. I have money. I'll lend you some. <laughs> Father always taught me never to take money from women, Susan. Mr. Willie, his lordship is waiting for you. I say, will you tell his lordship I'm just on the last egg and I'll be there in the tick? <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy what? Dorothy Hope. I read about you in a paper. Oh, you're going to be married, aren't you? Here's to your happiness. May I bring him to your party tonight? Of course. I say, do come into the old man. He's in a tearing rage. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'll see you tonight. Willie, I must know what happened. We'll be waiting outside in the hall. Good. <laughs> I want to get a nice view from there of me and my luggage being thrown out. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I say, before you express an opinion of me, how glad I am to see you looking so well. I'm not so well. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Now, listen to me, Master Willie. I'm in no mood for flippancy. Well, no more am I, Father, so we ought to get on splendidly. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Ashamed? Why? Don't you realize that for the... for the tenth time you've disgraced me? Oh, come now. How can anything I do disgrace you? Oh. Ah, there's great egoism on your part, surely. Anything disgraceful that I may do merely gains for you an unfair sympathy from a sycophantic world. Didn't you sell the house and furniture I gave you? True. 
But surely the only disgraceful thing you did was to give me the house and furniture to sell. <laughs> I agree. Well, then what are you getting so excited about? I'm not getting excited. <laughs> Shall we say that you're taking life and me too seriously? Now, now let, me, let me tell you, young man, you've been nothing but trouble since the day you were born. Well, now, as an intelligent man, I wonder you didn't anticipate that possibility. <laughs> now, now you're blaming me for bringing you into the world. I should be extremely mortified for your sake if I had to blame anyone else. Why? Why can't you settle down like any other man and do some good in the world? My dear father, I do nothing else. Have you had a moment's boredom since I've been in the room? No. Uh, your only trouble is you have the father complex. Uh, He's my son and he hasn't done any of the things I should like him to do and for that reason I should kick him out. Yeah. And if I thought it would give you any pleasure, I'd provoke you to do it. But I know it wouldn't. You'd merely lay awake at night, wondering if you'd done the wrong thing, until you fetch me back again. So to save you from such an invidious position, I, I refrain from provoking you. <laughs> and may I ask what you'd do if I did kick you out? <laughs> any man with two pounds, a gold cigarette case, and a watch, Father dear, could, if he chose, conquer the world. Yeah, and why... Why don't you? Well, it mean having to stay in one place too long. Uh. And until the time comes when I find myself in one place for all time, I propose, either through your generosity or my own wits, to move on and up. Yeah, but much... <laughs> much against my inclination, I... <laughs> Well, I'm bound to admit there's a good deal in what you say. Why, of course there is. Yes, hang it, uh, there is. Come now, all I've cost you in two years has been a house and some furniture. Uh -huh. I haven't cheated at cards. I haven't wrecked another man's home. I've just had a bit of fun, which were I in your place... Yeah. I shouldn't mind paying for. Okay. Well, if anybody had told me a minute ago... And I should be giving you a hundred pounds before you left this room. I should have bet them a thousand they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Take it and go to Blazes. And let me see a lot of you before you go. Oh, I feel this is taking advantage of you. Oh, you're wrong. I don't know why it is, but I... Well, I... I like giving it to you. You may be sure the money will be well spent, Father. Oh, ho, 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 well spent <laughs> indeed. <laughs> well spent. Oh, by the way, one good turn deserving another. Back Laguna for the Derby. Why? Because <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Laguna. <laughs> well... <laughs> Then goes that hundred pounds. What happened? Well, he gave me a lecture, you know, his number one special, and a hundred. Oh, and I've been a good girl all my life, and he never gave me a penny. <laughs> I will, though. A tenner out of this goes on Laguna for you, and a tenner for you. Why, I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. No. We're going to the Derby. But I can't. Father asked me to go, and I refused. She can't go, Willie. Really, she can't. Her fiancé would be there, and he'd be furious if she went without him. Well, I've no use for a fiancé who goes without her. But there'll be awful trouble. No, no, they won't see her. Quietly. We're going to the other side of the course, among the gypsies, the tramps, and all the real people. But Willie, oh, that's... do shut up, Susan. It sounds great fun, and I'm going. Right. Very well. Don't blame me if there's a row. Uh, Susan, behave. Mr. Willie. Mr. Willie. What about George? Uh, Blunt, will you look after him? And uh, take good care of him. He's going to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs>
So do I. Well, I've been on one all my life. Through you, I've had a grand day. Tell me, do you always have this much fun in life? I'm the richest man in the world. I laugh at myself and everything else 60 times a minute. <laughs> so if you want to back that horse, you better give me the money. I'll put it on for you. Oh, Angel. I've had my lunch. Look, there's 50 pounds for Willie, 10 for you, and 10 for Miss Hope on Laguna. I shan't take it if it wins. It's madness. Laguna hasn't a chance. I don't agree. I'm in luck today. I'll toss you for the last sausage roll. Mm -hmm. Heads I win, tails you lose. Tails, bad luck. I couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> you sure? Because I cheated. Positive. <laughs> Ooh, there's Father in the box. And Paul. Ooh, how bored they all look. Paul, that's your fiancé, isn't it? Yes. Can I have a look? Certainly. And they call that enjoying life. <laughs> Perhaps they're right. Oh, I see. Is Paul the fellow on the left? Yes. He's good looking. He is, rather. You know, when I leave you tonight, I shall pop into the first church I come to. What for? To pray for your happiness. Well, that's charming, Uncle. <laughs> Not at all. I've only known you a couple of minutes, but you go down in my diary as a grand girl. And I've only known you a couple of minutes, and I think you're a grand boy. Oh, Pity Dolly doesn't care for racing, isn't it, Paul? It is, rather. I tried to persuade her to come, but she preferred to see the cricket at Lord's. What a crowd there is on the other side of the course. Mm, one can only be grateful one isn't there. You should say so. How is it that Dorothy is not with him today? If she had her way, she wouldn't be with him at all. Father wants a grand duke in the family. <laughs> I got you 50 to 1. Oh, good. Let's see now. How much have I won? 50 times 50? Uh, 2,500. Not so bad. You haven't won yet. The bookmaker said it was a shame to take your money. <laughs> I shan't think the same when I take his. They're off. Do either of you like these glasses? No, no, you keep them. Come on, tell us what's happening. Oh, my poor old fellow's a long way behind. Oh, how sad. But he's holding his own, though. He's doing more than hold his own. My word, what a jockey. He, he's fifth. Believe it or not, he's fourth. He's abreast of the third. Oh, bless him, he's a grand fella. He's third. He's, he's second. He's better than second. It's neck and neck! Oh, no, no, no. He's either first or second. I can't bear it. Take the glasses and tell me what the numbers are. Quick. Eleven, nine... He's one! Oh. Hooray! Oh, I must kiss somebody. Susan, I've allowed a job for you. Really, how marvelous. Oh, how right I was to come home. And you get 500 in the morning. No. Now, that'll be a great lesson to both of you. Whenever in trouble, come to Willie. Well, I certainly shall. Oh, good. You'll be back with lunch in 
Oh, nonsense. Hey, you. Yeah? Uh, will you do something for me? Yeah. Uh, would you keep an eye on that luncheon basket until I come to the Derby next year? Huh? And in case you get bored, have a drink. Thank you, sir. Did you go? Uh, with Susan and her brother. Having refused to go with me, you went with that man. What do you mean by that man? Dorothy! What were you doing in that car with that fellow Hale this afternoon? She was coming back from the derby with him. You went with him and refused to go with Paul? It was purely accidental. I hope you'll avoid a similar accident. I disapprove of it. But he's charming. I don't wish you to know him. You don't? Well, I, I like him enormously. And I think I ought to tell you. I've had a card sent to him for our party tonight. Hey, you've asked him here? You had no right to do this, Dorothy. I'm much inclined to send him a note cancelling it. Well, let me tell you, if you do, I shan't be here. Have you lost your senses? I mean it. How, how dare you suggest such a thing? A perfectly charming man. Dorothy, I... please. Oh, leave me alone. Mr. Hale is on the telephone, miss. Hello, Willie. Mary. Yes. How are you, darling? Everything all right at home? Good. I rang you up about tonight. How about supper? No, no. Come to the apartment. All about midnight. I'll be waiting. So long, darling. You're a good dancer. One has to be to dance with you, Willie. Oh, I say, am I so very bad? Oh, but I like it. Well, I wish to tell you, you're a very thoughtless young woman. Why? You might have waited till I'd gone away again before you got engaged. Why? We can't go to any more races. No more swings. It's very thoughtless of you. <laughs> There's always Liverpool, though. That's funny. Oh, I know all about her. I even know who she is. Well, well, well. Does she like swings? Well, I haven't asked her, but I don't think she would. You must teach her to like them. Oh, you can't teach people to like swings. Either you like them or you don't. <laughs> I adore them. <laughs> so do I. But you know why? Tell me. We're tramps. Willie, I believe you're right. Willie is always right. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> I tell you, she's infatuated with the fellow. Oh, nonsense. She's only trying to make you jealous. There. There they go into the garden together. Not that they should be thinking of our other guests. you better go and fetch her. When are you going away again? Oh, I never know. That's the fun. Perhaps tomorrow, perhaps a year. Where are you going this time? 
Well, I think I'm going to get my father to buy me a sheep farm in New Zealand. Why? I don't sleep very well, and I can count the sheep going through the gate. <laughs> what a fool you are. By Jove. What is it? I wonder what sheep do when they can't sleep. <laughs> Dorothy, I've been looking for you everywhere. I do think your behavior is a little strange. Believe me, it's entirely my fault. I'm terribly sorry. I apologize. I wasn't talking to you. Paul. I'm sorry. Hey, something's happened. Did you see her face? A lover's tip, old friend. If I thought that Dorothy had got that Russian's number, I'd drink her father's champagne until you had to carry me home. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Dorothy, but... You will apologize to Mr. Hale. That cab? Nothing would induce How me. How dare you call a man you don't even know? Everyone who knows him says he is. Besides, what man but a cab would have taken you from the ballroom, making me look the greatest fool imaginable? It was I who made you look the fool. I took him from the ballroom. You took... Do you like him? Enormously. He... He made love to you. He has the distinction of being one of the few men I've ever known who hasn't. In any case, I, I must insist on your never speaking to him again. Are you serious? Yes. I must ask you from tonight not to know him. Really? As I propose to know all the people like him I can, you'll find the responsibility of me too great. Dorothy, you don't mean this. I never meant anything more. Oh, my dear, you're angry now. Later on, you'll think different. Please. Please don't do anything so stupid. You know your father is going to announce our engagement almost at once. You look an awful fool if he does. But... So I should stop him. Dorothy, please. You'll look less of a fool if you say I've fainted and gone to bed. But won't you... And to make it even more convincing, I'd suggest the doctor be sent for at once. Dorothy! Of their linoleum. <laughs> Dorothy. Dorothy, dear, it's your mother. Dorothy, I want you to come downstairs. You've been making love to Dorothy. Don't be silly, darling. I only met the girl this morning. She likes you a lot. I wish you'd take her away from that fellow, Willie. Well, even if I could and I can't, I wouldn't. Why not? Well, she's. She's too nice for one thing. And too rich for another. I say, Susan, would you mind if I left you here? Where are you going? Uh, places. <laughs> Not Liverpool, I trust. Yes, and I'm only just time. So long, darling. Nothing will induce her to come down. What? What can we do? No, well, we'll tell everyone she's uh, overtired and astray. I, I should have kicked the fellow out. I have a much more effective way of dealing with that gentleman. Leave it to me. I'll undertake that Dorothy will be much more reasonable in the morning. Oh. <laughs> Willie, what on earth's the matter with you? Uh, sorry, darling, nothing, nothing. Darling, you're hundreds of miles away. Uh, I, uh, I've got a headache. I'm sorry. Why didn't you tell me? No, it's all right now. Not fed up with me, are you? Why, of course not. Well, you might say it with a little more enthusiasm, Willie, dear. Oh, don't be silly, darling. Have a sweet. Thank you. I have one. And I adore him. I'd shoot anyone who tried to take you from me, Willie. Are you a good shot? Ah. Susan.
Uh, sorry, Susan, I, um, I came to borrow your nail scissors. Did you find them? Yes. Clever of you. They're in the next room. Oh. I do wish you wouldn't throw my photographs about. Pretty, isn't it? Yes. And thanks to you, free. Well, I had nothing to do with it. No, so hadn't you? Certainly not. Well, she adores you. Ah, psh. Ah, here you are. A messenger just brought this letter for you. Thank you. It's from Hope. Dorothy's father? Yes, what, what's that old jumped up linoleum maker want with you? He says he wants to see me at two o'clock this afternoon. Matter of the utmost importance. Congratulations! What do you mean? Don't, don't stand any nonsense from that old bully. If he tries to be stingy with you, put him in his place. Do you know what you're talking about? Oh, 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 oh. Hark at the blackguard trying to humbug us. Oh, 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 you, you played your cards marvelously. Oh, <laughs> you are one of the worst characters I've ever met. I'll put you over my knee and spank you if you talk to me like that, you smug little... Susan, now I know why I'm a bad man. <laughs> Mr. William Hale. Mr. Hope. Take a seat, Mr. Hale. Thank you. Uh, as men of the world, you'd like me to come straight to the point. Uh, straight. You have, I understand, since your return to England, been seeing quite a lot of my daughter. Sufficient to be able to offer you my sincere congratulations. Yeah. It may be coincidence. But since knowing you, my daughter has broken off her engagement to a young man from whom I have the highest to God. Oh, how tragic it is that children so seldom do what their parents want them to. My father has the most awful trouble with me. Mm, so I am told. Yeah, I thought you had been. So I accuse you of being the cause of that engagement being broken. Oh, my dear sir, you're wrong. It was another man who was the cause. Who? The fellow she is engaged to. She was in love with him until you arrived. A desire to please a father and mother can hardly be described as love. Oh, so you put that idea in her head. I? What business is it of mine? Because she's a rich girl and you want to marry her yourself. Ah. The men of the world have reached the point. Yes. <laughs> By no word have I suggested that she should dislike the man you chose for her, or like me. You're much too subtle. Mr. Hope, I trust your linoleum is better than your manners. How dare you speak to me like that? Why? Are you ashamed of your linoleum? You, who have failed in everything you've ever touched, and in every country in the world who have been given chances again and again, and who in the end have nothing to your credit but a reputation as a gambler with other people's money. Oh, that's true. That's terribly true. Why, you've never done an honest day's work in your life. Even your own father has described you as being a, a curse since the day you were born. Did the old villain say that about me? He did. I'll give him the devil for that when I get home. So, uh, let us conclude the conversation. Good. If my daughter marries you or any man like you, not a single penny of my money will she ever receive. Do you mean that? I swear it, Mr. Hale. Nothing would persuade you to alter your mind? Nothing, I swear it. This information alters your point of view on marriage considerably, doesn't it, Mr. Hale? Yes. I can't quite tell you how considerably. It may even mean my going abroad again at once. I should if I were you. Yes. Where's Miss Dorothy? Miss Dorothy is on the terrace, sir. Would you take me to her? This way, sir. Willie, what are you doing here? I've come to tell you I've only 1,500 pounds in the world and that's through wicked horse racing. What do you mean? And I've been a bad boy all my life. Have you been drinking? And that if I should leave this world tonight, my epitaph should be... He endeavoured to leave this world a far worse place than it was before he came into it. What's the matter? And that if I had a daughter like you, and I felt a man like me wanted to marry her, I should be as angry as your father is, but and I should see he never had a penny of my money. Willie, what is the matter with you? Well, don't be a fool, darling. Can't you see I'm proposing marriage to you? <laughs> but what a curious... And should it be in your mind to accept me, your father will cut you off without a penny. 
And when the 1,500 pounds is gone, it may mean you will be starving in the gutter. I should adore it. And I accept you and all the risks that go with it. <laughs> you love me? Love you? I've been squinting ever since I met you. So have I. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy I have a good mind to... What? To go and give a thousand pounds to a hospital. You dare. <laughs> but seriously, Dorothy, after all you've been used to, it's an awful risk. None. I believe in you. Angel, I won't fail you. But before you finally accept, I think you should hear the story of my life. Oh, Father has told it to me so often. Oh, but Father's only told you the bits he knows. Mm -hmm. And I think you ought to hear them. No. Yes. What about Liverpool? What? Did you love her? I liked her terribly. But you'll never see her again. Only to say goodbye to her. I don't want you to. You must uh, uh, write to her. Oh, but that would be mean. She's been so terribly nice to me all. I don't care. You're not to see her again. Well, but... Oh, very well, if, if, you, if you like her so much. Oh. You... you don't understand. Oh, whether I do or not doesn't matter. I, I've been jealous of her. Hated her ever since I've known you. Oh, if you really love me, you'll never see her again. Very well. You swear it? Yes, but... Do I... you swear it or not? <laughs> I swear it. Cross your heart. <laughs> That's all right. Of course, it, it would be generous you of you if you... You crossed your heart. Mr. Hale, I thought you'd gone. I stayed behind to ask your daughter if she had any objection to my being your son-in-law. Mm -hmm. hey? And I haven't any. It's in your power to make your daughter a very attractive wedding present, Mr. Hope. Being? Being your presence at her wedding. <laughs> oh, ring me up later, Willie. <laughs> oh, be nice, please. You little fool. Do you suggest there can be any happiness for you if you marry this man? I know there will be. Uh, of all the men in the world I don't know, I should like you to be the first to congratulate me. In a year, you'll be sharing him with heaven knows how many other women. Oh, you don't know him. Know him? Do you suppose he really believes that I would cut you off without a penny? Perhaps you like him so much, you'd enjoy sharing him with Mary Crayle. He's given me his word never to see her again. And you believe him? Absolutely. And if he does see her again, will that convince you that I'm right? Then I should never speak to him again. Very well. George, old fellow, concentrate. Have you ever had to tell a lady who likes you very much and who's always been terribly nice to you that you're never going to see her again? You have? How did you do it? You wrote to her. Yeah, I suppose that's the best way. My dearest Mary, well, there's no, nothing very final about dearest, is there? Mary Darling. Huh? Too affectionate. My dear Mary. Oh, of course it won't do. Well, don't sit there looking like an idiot. Can't you help me start the infernal thing? Is this the Burke Detective Agency? I'm Mr. Hope speaking. I wish you to send me at once the best man you have in the service. Yes, private work. At once. Thank you. How about my dear? I know. Don't put anything at all. Just start in without any darlings, dearest, or... Huh? Huh? You're right. It's too crude. What's that? 
telephone to her. That's a good idea. A Mayfair 2163. <laughs> I don't know why the devil I didn't think of this way myself. Hello. Hello, Mary. How are you? What's that supper tonight? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid I can't. No, I'm not going anywhere. But well, when I say I'm not going anywhere, I mean I, I, I promised to stay in with my father. Hmm? No, no, no. He does not go to bed at 11. Mary, I want to tell you something. Uh, what's that? She says all she wants to hear is that I adore her. Well, how can I say I don't over a telephone? Who's a coward? Hello, hello. Uh, Mary, they, they cut us off. Uh, listen, Mary, darling, really... Oh, I shouldn't have called her darling. Well, here goes. Hello, Mary. Mary, I... I, I want to tell you something. I... Uh, I want to tell you that I'll have to ring you up again later. My father's just sent for me. Yes, I know I am. But you try and tell a girl as nice as Mary Crail that you don't like her anymore and see how you like it. Well, George, what do we do now, eh? Go and see her. No, I'm not allowed to. Meet her accidentally and tell her on the street. That's not a bad idea. No one could say a word against that, surely. That's playing the game, isn't it? Mary. Willie, dear, what a divine surprise. Yes. Jump in my car. No, no, Mary, I'm afraid I can't. I've got to tell you something. Oh, how solemn you are. Don't be a fool. No, Jump no, in. I can't, Mary. I, it's no good. I can't go. Well, my I, dear, you can't keep me hanging no, about but, streets. But, but, Mary. Will you please I, get in? No. I, <laughs> yes. Oh. Hope's house, 17 Barclay Square. As fast as you can go. All right. Sit down. Willie, you frighten me. What is it you want to say to me? I've come to say goodbye. <laughs> Don't be absurd. Father, do you want me? Oh, yes, dear. Come in. Wait for me in the hall. Yes, sir. Dorothy, you told me if Mr. Hale ever spoke to that girl again, that would be the end, as far as you're concerned. Yes. Why do you ask me this? He's with her now. Why, oh, I, I don't believe you. Nothing would make me believe you. Then ring up our house, Mayfair 2163, and ask to speak to him. I simply don't believe you. Are you frightened, too? No. Listen. If he's not there, I'll consent to your marriage. That's fair, isn't it? Mayfair, 2163. So you like someone else? Terribly. Willie! And you're going to marry her? Yes. You mean I shan't see you again? This is the last time. Oh, Mary, I'm terribly sorry, but it's so much better to be frank. I can't cheat you. I couldn't even let someone else tell you, hating telling you as I do. Answer that, please. Hello? Yes? Who is it? Dorothy! Dorothy! Over Funny how little time everything lasts in my life. Even being engaged to a married. Cheer up, Willie. There's nothing one can't recover from.
Good night, Mary. Why wouldn't you listen to me when I told you what sort of a man he was? Oh, I, I couldn't believe it. Don't take it too seriously, my dear. In a little while, you won't. Will you do something for me? Why, anything in the world. Will you put 5,000 pounds into my bank? Why, of course. I'll attend to it first thing in the morning. Thank you. May I ask what you want it for? Compared to what I might have had to pay, my experience will cost me very little. Uh, tell her it's a matter of the of the utmost importance, will you? Dorothy. My dear, please, I... Won't you sit down? Oh, I know you must be angry, disappointed, but... Go on. For heaven's sake, don't look at me as if I were trying to sell you a gramophone. I'm in no hurry. I, I suppose in time you'll tell me why you're here. Well, don't you realize the bad luck of it? I only went to... To see that woman, having promised me you wouldn't. Will you believe me if I tell you why I, I know. Went? Why did I go? Because you're in love with her. Why not have the courage to ask for money instead of cheating for it? But you don't seriously imagine that I wanted your money, do you? What else did you want? What's this for? I believe one should pay for experience. For an expert, I admit you have been very underpaid. Did you... Did you treat the Grand Duke Paul as generously? <laughs> I'd have insulted him by even offering it to him. I see. Five thousand pounds. Well, it's not very much, of course, but the times are hard for all of us. So one must be grateful, I suppose. Thank you. Goodbye. One thousand, two, three, four, five. Five thousand pounds, sir. Thank you. Whiskey and soda? Yes, sir. Hello, young Hale. Glad to see you. Hello. You want a thousand pounds? <laughs> I should think I did. Now, what's the idea? Go on, uh, pick the one you like best. What's the matter with you? Can you recommend a charity, a vulgar one for preference? We'll be glad of them. <laughs> Did you steal them? <laughs> They're burning me. Well, name any charity you like. They'll have them in five minutes. I know a friend of yours who'll be glad of them. Oh, who? The Grand Duke Paul. His creditors, believing he was going to marry Dorothy, kept quiet. And now that you've knocked him out, they're playing the devil with him. I'm told the poor devil hasn't even money for a meal. Forever, I'm your friend. Thank you. Uh, would you send a messenger at once? Yes, sir. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Good. Let's dine together and talk about life. Yes. Yes. All right. Dorothy, your friend Hale cashed your check at 10 o'clock this morning. What? It's, it's unbelievable. The bank confirmed it. And Miss Mary Crail, the famous actress, left for the south of France 
by the first boat train. Do you mean that? I mean, obviously, he's gone with her and you're paying all the expenses. Oh. I never believed you would ever, apart from anything else, have been so incredibly stupid. Oh. I sympathize. A bitter lesson for you, my dear, but in time you'll be grateful for it. Come in. Miss Dorothy. Why, it's from Paul. Oh. I wonder what he wants. You read it. I'm tired. Dearest Dorothy, your charming thought I will forever treasure. Your sympathetic understanding of my difficulties has touched me very much. Through your kindness in sending me the 5,000 pounds, I'm able to leave for home via Paris tonight. Will you please believe I shall never forget your kindness ever gratefully, Paul? Oh, let me see it. Your kindness in sending me 5,000 pounds. Oh. 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 What does it mean? <laughs> mean? Why, it means that your villain Hale cashed my check, put the notes in an envelope and sent them to Paul from me. And Paul took them. <laughs> what a glorious idea. Oh, this is the most terrible disillusionment I have ever known. Oh, oh. oh I sympathize. A bitter lesson for you, Father, dear. But in time, you'll be grateful for it. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh, you, you don't really believe Willie's gone to Paris with her, do you? I'll never believe in anything again if he hasn't. Come in. Yes? The man from the detective agency is here, sir. Oh, show him in. This way, please. Well? Mr. Hale left his house early this morning and went straight to a bank, sir. From there, he went to his club. And from there to a shipping office. A shipping office? Yes, sir. Where he booked two tickets for New Zealand. Two! Two. One for a dog. Oh. oh. Well, I won't need you anymore. See my secretary. Thank you, sir. Paul's a crook. Mary Creel's gone to Paris. Willie Hale's going to New Zealand. What are you going to do? Bravo. Crawl about after him on my hands and knees until he promises to take me with him. And if he refuses? Then you'll have to do something about it. Um, he doesn't like me. I tell you you're a liar. I say you've had a row with her. I have not. Well, then what do you want to go to New Zealand for? Because if I ever want to go to Australia, I'll be near. <laughs> well, don't. Don't look to me for any more money, if you make a mess of it for the eleventh time. <laughs> I'm going to be such a good boy, you'll hate me. <laughs> you, you a good boy. <laughs> well, I do think his father's getting old and he doesn't it, want... Not so much of the old. <laughs> he doesn't want you to go. You might be nice to stay in England. No. Well, then go to the devil. I'm bored with going so often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hello, everybody. What, Dorothy? Hello, Willie. You're just the very girl I wanted to see. This fella, this fella says he's going to New Zealand. Oh, really? Uh, Father, darling, I want to show you the housekeeping book. I don't want to see the housekeeping books. Father? I hate the sight of them. I... Oh, yes. <laughs> Excuse me, my coat? Oh. Thank you. Uh, may I ask what you're doing here? Well, I've come to tell you that... that I've forgiven you for the way you behaved to me. You... you've forgiven me? Yes. Don't you think it's sweet of me? Oh, I shall explode in a minute. And leave that dog alone. I'm sorry. You accuse me of the foulest thing in the world. You insult me by giving me 5,000 pounds and then say that you've forgiven me. I, I'm almost laughing I'm so angry. 
Well, what was I to think? You promised me you, you crossed your heart you'd never see her again. Oh, Willie, how could you? How? You, you are. Supposing I were married to you and a girl came along and said, Willie, let's run away. And I said, right, you are. Just pop over and tell Dara. Then she said, no, you don't. And the first time you knew about it was when you read it in the papers. What would you think of me? Is that likely to happen if I married you? Yes, it is. Well, what a caddish thing to say to a girl you're only engaged to. I'm not. Now, what do you mean by walking into a man's bedroom without knocking? I thought perhaps coming events cast their shadows. Well, they don't. And please leave me. I'm very busy packing. What are you going to do when you get to New Zealand, Willie? Marry. Oh, nothing would induce Father to let me go with you under those conditions. <laughs> That's funny. I had no intention of asking you. Oh, he's so old-fashioned. He'll insist upon our being married before we start. You don't seriously imagine that after the way you've insulted me that I'd marry you, do you? You'd be an awful fool if you didn't. Why? I'm pretty, very companionable, and in every way suited to be a poor man's wife. Kiss me, Willie. Nothing would induce me to. How much longer are you going on with this strong man business? For years and years and years. Will you kiss me at once? Uh, leave me alone. I'll not be bullied. And after the way you behave... Oh, shut up uh, about the way I've behaved. Think of some of the things you've done in your life. Besides, I was hurt, jealous, miserable. And if you ever do anything like that again, I'll hit you over the head with a bottle. You wouldn't. I would. Oh, I've been looking for a girl like you for the last ten years. <laughs> May I ask what you're laughing at? Dorothy's father's downstairs. He doesn't want you to go to New Zealand. He wants to lend you the money to buy a farm in England. <laughs> May I ask what there is to laugh at in there? Oh, nothing. Nothing, only... Only next time you go broke, it'll be his furniture you're selling. And not mine. <laughs> Dorothy, don't you pay any attention to that wicked old man. I won't. <laughs> 